You know what's disturbing? This guy's face on another face. Yeah, you just try and get that image out of your head. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and today we are diving headfirst back into the realm of Devil Fruits, and quite specifically, to examine what happens when these abilities take a bit of a turn for the worst and result in some pretty disturbing effects. It can be quite easy to forget, but these fruits in the world at large are known as cursed existences spawned from the sea devil himself. And every now and then, we do stumble upon a fruit worthy of this sort of renown. Before we jump into that though, it's time for a quick round of Devil Fruit or Angel Fruit, a very simple mini game, the rules of which are as follows. Your mother has just returned home from shopping and within this bag is either a devil or an angel fruit, the latter of which actually exists in real life and is probably better known as a papaya. Regardless, it is going to be your job to guess which fruit is in the bag. And should you guess incorrectly, then your punishment will be to subscribe to the Grand Line Review, which will also result in consistent injections of One Piece culture administered straight into your YouTube feed. Meanwhile, well, if you are correct, then you will get to eat the fruit in question. But which will it be, devil fruit or angel fruit? Make your selection now and we shall reveal the answer in three, two, one, and bam, it is a filthy, filthy devil fruit. Ugh, not at all tasty. But if you did guess incorrectly, then you know the thing it is that you now need to do the thing. And please do say hi in the comments down below if you are a new member of the Grand Fleet, welcome. But let's begin showcasing our legitimately disturbing devil fruits, commencing with 10th place where we find Baron Tamago's Tamatomonomi, which in case you are not where Tamago means egg, and that makes a lot of sense because Tamago himself is also egg, as well as many other things, depending on how many times he is brutally killed. So this is actually quite a cool devil fruit in many ways because it does appear to give the user a sense of immortality, or at least the ability to, you know, not die via being killed. Because after sustaining a fatal injury, thus cracking the egg user, they first evolve into what I can only describe as egg goop, and then proceed to evolve into either a chick or even a fully grown chimkin, depending on where in the evolution process they are. In fact, it's even possible that they can go straight back to being an egg. That's the whole commentary of this fruit, posing the question of what came first, chicken or egg? Science says egg, by the way. But this devil fruit has always kind of weirded me out because to make best use of its power, you do need to fatally wound yourself. And even after that, there's a period where you exist purely as egg yolk, brown yolk, by the way, which that, that cannot be good. So thank you to the anime for like that color scheme. And just look, I don't want to be an egg. I don't want to eat this fruit, it's weird, just go away. Nor do I necessarily want to be hanging laundry, which brings us to number nine, the Washu Washu no Mi, a curious ability held by Vice Admiral Suru. And in theory, as well as practice, I guess, it allows her to literally wash people, then hang them out to dry like some sort of garment, which would actually appear to be one of the most overpowered devil fruits in the series, really, because the washing process immediately renders Suru's targets prone and restructures their bodily composition to mimic fabric, leaving them to dry with assumedly some sort of cool, sea breeze. And apparently the cleansing even goes a bit deeper than that as well, because those with evil hearts will have some of that scrubbed right off them as well, becoming much more gooder people, I suppose. But this fruit weirds me out because I can't help but picture myself as one of the other hanging dude bros. And to be fair, they, they do look like they're having the time of their lives. But anything that robs you of control of your body while still keeping you conscious is a thought that makes me quite uncomfortable. Although admittedly, I do think it's quite cute that Suru also washed their weapons as well. She's very, very thorough. Time for Swamp Terror now with number eight, where we find the Numa Numa no Mi, the Swamp Logia wielded by the ever in popular Caribou. I think I meant to say unpopular, but you know what? In popular will do. Because what weirds me out about this devil fruit all has to do with your inner self. Because no, Swamp is not one of the more pleasant substances to have control over, but it's generally not all that disturbing, except in the case of one particular ability, which is when Caribou decides to suck you up. His swampy, swampy body acts as something of a pocket dimension where people can be absorbed into an eternity of pure swamp, which is pretty wild because being engulfed in the swamp will apparently not kill you via suffocation. So you'll just be doomed to live out the rest of your days swimming around in literally endless swamp with no light and no hope, other than maybe Carabo might take you out to play with on occasion. It really is a pretty dark fruit wrapped in the packaging of this derpy character. And as a result of all the antagonists in the series, Carabo is pretty damn high on the wish list of those you would not want to get caught by. Him and Caesar Clown, I think, because I'm not too keen on being experimented on either. Although I might be a bit more keen on that than facing off against our number seven disturbing devil fruit though, which would be the better better no me held by Treble. Look, I don't like mucus. I don't know anyone who does like mucus. If you do, for whatever reason, just be aware. I'm, I'm, I'm not judging you, but you know, kindly stay away from me. Now at the very least, the better better no me is a paramecia, so it doesn't have the option of being caught in this mucus pocket dimension like the, uh, the filthy swamp fruit. But I still find the thought 
of being caught by this power infinitely worse than a swamp related demise. And that may also be because Treble elects to use this fruit by always having his nose running, which he does use as a snot blade in case of emergency. So very annoyingly, it's a pretty great fruit in terms of power and utility, but it's easily the most undesirable substance in the entire series to be granted control over, let alone deciding to drape yourself in this mucusy facade. Still, at least mucus is a tangible threat, whereas our next contender is something potentially far more horrifying in the Memo Memonomy. Possessed by one Charlotte Pudding and no more, we don't need any more, but this allows her to quite literally thrust her hand into the head of a target and pull out their memories in the form of a film strip. Pudding can then perform her own director's cut of these memories, taking things away and even adding extra scenes as she sees fit before unceremoniously like cramming them back into the mushy brain hole of the other victim. And this fruit disturbs me more than any other substance could because the power to manipulate memories is a truly scary thing. Less so possessing the power and more so being subjected to it and then needing to live your life with a profound belief in a lie or just losing incredibly important information or memories. In the wrong hands, this could be quite a sickening ability and there's lots of wrong hands in the world. Some of them do belong to Pudding, at least two of them do, or at least one of her schizophrenic personas, which I am going to refer to as the Pudding Pals. And we have a very similar sense of terror happening in fifth place, just far, far worse with the Hobby Hobby no Me. I say worse because if at least you fall victim to the Memo Memo powers, you're unaware that you're a victim. So that's, that, that might be nice. However, if you fall victim to the Hobby Hobby no Me, we have the exact opposite scenario where only you are aware that you are the victim. Upon being turned into a toy slave by Sugar, everyone who ever knew you in any capacity will immediately lose those memories. So not only do you become an eternal toy slave, but you are also forced to watch the world go on around you, completely unaware of the fact that you've ever existed, and certainly nobody will be in a rush to save you from your eternal hell as a result. In fact, there are legitimately a couple of times when I remember feeling physically ill when reading One Piece, and the revelation of this power was one of those times. It's just so twisted and depressing to think about that happening to someone or even yourself. In fact, especially yourself. And honestly, this is another one of those cases where I'd probably rather fall victim to the, uh, the swamp dimension as much as I hate to say it. Now turning to something even more existential, in fourth place, we discover the Sorosoronomi, the devil fruit of the ill-fated Mother Carmel, and now the devil fruit of the well-fed Big Mom, because I suppose roast nun is something of a delicacy after all. And this is one of those moments where One Piece very casually answers one of the biggest questions that humanity could ever ask themselves, which is, does the soul exist? And well, thanks to Brooke and Big Mom, we know for a fact that it does. But sadly, if it exists, then that also means it can be manipulated. The Sorosoronomi allows its user to interact with Fragment and even steal a target's soul. Which, I don't know, just imagine what it would feel like to have someone ripping your soul from its fleshy vessel, I and mean, it's bound to be fairly unpleasant, I'm sure. As is the activation requirement of needing to fear the person conducting said soul screwage. So that's a pretty big one-two punch of disturbing. Not only are you going to have your soul taken, but it also needs to be done by someone you profoundly fear, meaning that there really is no good way to be subjected to this power. Unless you're the user, in which case you can have a delightful time at your new Disneyland built exclusively from the souls of your terrified victims. On the other hand, how would you like to be a jacket? No, well, look, just hear me out as I explain our third place finisher, the Jacket Jacket no Me. Imagine a world where you can transform from a fully capable human being into a completely prone piece of clothing at will. Then it gets better because you can be worn by someone else, take over their body and become a weird fusion being. All right, so that part doesn't sound too bad, not the last part anyway. Now imagine it from the other person's perspective. A skin jacket begins talking to you saying provocative things like, wear me, wear me. So against your better judgment, you do in fact wear the talking skin jacket only to discover that it is a full skin bodysuit, which zips up and takes control of your own body. Pretty terrifying, even if it would be entirely your fault for putting it on you moron. But the jacket jacket no me has always been one of those bizarre, almost grotesque existences in One Piece where I really would not want to be on either side of this power. I don't want to be the prone skin jacket needing to be worn, nor do I want to be the guy literally wearing another human being just so that we can fuse together and create another weird human being. It is not worth it. Still, even then, it's probably a better fate than being juiced alive. And what do I mean by juiced? Well, let me introduce you to our silver medalist of Disturbia, the Shibo Shibo no Mi, held by one Charlotte Smoothie, which gives her the ability to absorb liquid from both living and non-living things. But 
but only by way of brutally wringing the mouth like a towel. And unlike say the washi washi no mi, where you can argue that the victims are very much enjoying their rather disturbing experiences, we can't quite say the same thing for the targets of the shibo shibo no mi. I mean, just look at this lady and imagine this. She is having her internal organs twisted tightly like a towel, simply for the purpose of producing precious juices for the high class guests of Big Mom's tea party. And look, I must admit, part of me does wonder what this juice tastes like. This is another one of those moments of uh, casual horror being inserted into this fun pirate series by Oda. This woman, this giraffe, and perhaps even this rock are just being tortured in front of our eyes and we just have to sit here and go, yeah, cool. Although on a much lighter note, in the very same chapter that we were subjected to this horror, we also got the cover page of Crocodile holding an umbrella for a puppy in the rain. So that's, uh, that's just delightful. However, we still have our ultimate king of disturbing to examine, something that has a name which seems very delightful, but is anything but. I should have not written but there twice. Because in number one, we have the smile devil fruits. These are quite possibly the single most disturbing things I've ever encountered in shonen manga. Because really, there is no good outcome from consuming one of these. Either you pick a dud fruit, which is most of them, and you spend your entire life unable to emote in any manner other than expressing pure glee, even at the most depressing of situations. Or, or get this, you are successful and you become a pure abomination of nature. Because most of the smile fruits we've seen are more of an impediment to living rather than any sort of benefit. Like I still have a lot of trouble thinking about what Holdem's crotch lion was able to do for him, apart from being repeatedly punched in the dick. But it's a similar thing for the rest of them. The smile fruit users are fun to look at and have a bit of a laugh in the same way that you might see a carnival of weirdos pop up into town from time to time. But you do need to ask yourself, would you really want to be one of them? Would you? Regardless of your answer, if you'd like to examine the world of fruit a bit more, then please do check out this video, which examines whether or not the Pirate King Goldie Roger was a devil fruit user. Very intriguing stuff, so I look forward to seeing you there.